Hello, I've just been riding BMW's new F800R. Now, it's sort of tucked away in BMW's range, losing a competition for attention with stuff like the S1000RR and R1200GS. You could almost forget it's there, which might be why, six years after its introduction, BMW has given it a quite a big round of updates. Power is up from 87 to 90 horsepower. First and second gears are shorter. The suspension has been uprated with new upside down forks and brakes upgraded to radial mounted Brembo front calipers. The seat and pegs are slightly lower. The first thing you'll notice, if you know the old one well, is that it's lost its Anne Robinson wink. The lopsided asymmetrical headlight has gone. It still makes a weird sound. It's a noise only a BMW parallel twin makes. It's unlike any other parallel twin I know. It sounds hollow. It's like an engine in a wooden box. And but it's just a sound. The F800R engine does have some character in the way it delivers power. Um, it's surprisingly strong. About town, with the shorter first and second gears, a little bit of throttle gives you a good surge of drive. It pulls well from just over 3,000 RPM in third, and it's flexible too. It's just as happy revving to the 8,500 RPM red line. The bike I tested was fitted with electronic suspension adjustment, or ESA, it's 290 pounds. There are three settings, comfort, normal, and sport, and you choose between them by pressing a single button on the left bar. Now, even in comfort, suspension felt firm and well damped, so much so that I didn't feel the need for the other two modes, even on sweeping, bumpy bends. And the F800R feels taut enough already. It reminded me quite a lot of a Triumph Street Triple. On paper, they look different. The Street Triple revs higher and makes about 15 horsepower more, but both have a flexible combination of mid-range and top end, and both also have torque suspension, a similar sporty, aggressive hooligan attitude. Claimed weight is 202 kilograms, which isn't bad considering it's with a full tank. It feels light and responsive, changing direction on country roads and in town. The wide bars are low enough to put some force and feedback through your arms under braking. And the brakes are excellent, with lots of bite from the front four-pot calipers and 320mm discs. Pressure from one finger is all that is needed most of the time, and the ABS is capable, not confused by braking on bumpy surfaces like some systems can be. I'm not sure about comfort. The seat's not that padded, and I was beginning to feel it after an hour or two's riding, even in comfort mode, and there are some vibes through the bars on the motorway. There is a little wind deflection from that fly screen, but you'd probably want the optional taller one if you do a lot of motorway miles. That's one of a big range of options, which also includes BMW's automatic stability control traction control system for 310 quid. The bike I rode seems to have had most of the options catalogue thrown at it, with heated grips, pannier mounts, luggage rack, belly pan, LED indicators, centre stand and pillion seat cover. Now it's an accomplished sporty middleweight. It's available restricted to 47 horsepower and you could do a lot worse if you're limited to that by an A2 licence. I'm restricted again when your licence permits and you've got BMW Street Triple without having to buy a second bike. For those of us not restricted to 47 horsepower, the BMW's biggest problem might be Yamaha's Naked MT-09. That's got one more cylinder, 25 more horsepower and a 6949 plus on the road charges. It's cheaper than even the cheapest F800R, which is 7595 on the road. Plus, Yamaha hasn't just recalled over 300,000 motorcycles globally, as BMW recently did. That said, the old F800R is reputedly reliable and it wasn't included in that recall, so perhaps we should give this new one the benefit of the doubt.